Today's accelerating inflation rate proves that after eight years, this Prime Minister is just not worth yeah. the cost. After he and his ministers pumped their fists in the air and declared victory over inflation, it has now gone up 43 percent in two months. Through all categories, it's higher than it here in Canada than it is in the United States and Japan. And worse, it may force the Bank of Canada to raise interest rates again, causing Canadian households who are the most indebted in the G7 to go bankrupt. Will he balance the budget to bring down inflation and rates before that nightmare unfolds? Over the past year, we've demonstrated that we were able to bring down inflation from the highs of 8.1 percent, while at the same time being there to invest in Canadians. What the Leader of the Opposition is saying is he wouldn't have been there to help 11 million Canadians with the grocery rebate. He wouldn't have been there to help Canadians with dental care for kids who, whose families can't send them to the dentist. He certainly wouldn't have been there to cut child care fees in half right across the country on the way to $10 a day. Those are measures, Mr. Speaker, that have helped Canadians while maintaining fiscal responsibility and seeing inflation. Doubling the debt on Canadians is not fiscal responsibility, and forcing Canadians to live in tents is not compassion, Mr. Speaker. That, that is the reality. After eight years of this Prime Minister, life is miserable, especially for the poorest among us. And his solution is to make it everything cost even more. Inflation is now accelerating. He hasn't brought it down. He stacked 4 percent inflation on top of the previous 8 percent inflation, which means that Canadians can't eat, heat or house themselves. Will he re reverse his disastrous policies? For a while, the Leader of the Opposition continues to talk down Canadians and talk down the Canadian economy and say that everything is broken. We're getting to work helping Canadians through this difficult time. We're eliminating GST on construction and new apartment buildings to make sure that people can get rents. And we're encouraging all provinces to do the same. A number of provinces have stepped up. We're just going to make housing more accessible for millions of Canadians. We're also moving forward on uh, extending the repayment deadline for CBA loans to help small businesses, and we're working directly with grocery uh, chains to stabilize food prices. One of the ways that this Prime Minister doubled housing costs was by flooding the economy with $600 billion of newly created cash, which bid up the price of homes, forced Canadians to overpay, and then many bought at rock bottom low rates because he promised that they would never go up. His inflationary deficits pushed them up, and now one-fifth of all Canadians are actually unable to pay the interest on their mortgages. Their mortgages are growing in size when they renew. It will be at a bigger principal at a higher rate. Yeah. How many Canadians will go bankrupt and will we have a mortgage crisis when that happens? Yeah. Yes or no? We know Canadians are struggling right now. I heard from a mom from Oakville who actually said that uh, her, in, her mortgage prices, mortgage costs went up the same amount as her childcare costs came down. Thank God they cancelled each other out, but people should be doing better than that.